host. I hope that will be made a co-host. I'll be able to uh, to welcome. Him. But before before I I, I invite him, uh, just a brief background, probably a brief introduction about me. My name is Charles Shirongo. I'm a part of uh, Royal Youth Mentorship Program. Uh, those people behind the scenes and helping in uh, one or two things. I'm. Uh, I basically joined RYMP because I'm a writer and I have some passion for writing. Uh, and of course, I, I support in one uh, in terms of writing. Uh, I am uh, in, in my profession, I am a surveyor or uh, I, I deal with math in the DGS partial field and all those other things. Mm -hmm. I'm passionately uh, focused on development or personal development or developing others. Uh, more specifically, uh, I, I like uh, uh, growing people, yeah. and that is basically what I, I do. So apart from being uh, in, in that kind uh, serving and mapping, I'm also a pastor, a uh, Christian pastor, that is, and uh, I minister at uh, Happy New Life uh, Revival Church. We have a branch at Embakasi. If you find me there, you will, uh, or if you, you, you look for me, you will find me there in terms of that line. So that is briefly about, and then of course, I know uh, for several of us who have joined already, we, we have an understanding of what RMP is, but just to briefly again, uh, expound on what we do and what uh, we are focused on, we are working uh, towards building a strong youth, uh, you know, society basically, and to grow up our youth so that they can be able to support and they can be able to tackle challenges uh, that come up uh, in life, early on in life, especially if one is transitioning from uh, being a student to uh, being fully utilized or being uh, part of this uh, larger society. We are focused on that. And specifically tonight, we have this session, specifically all, it is a special session that we have uh, targeted specifically university students, university alumni, those who just recently graduated. And mostly that is, that is what our focus tonight is. And I would, uh, of course, uh, be happy to say that uh, we, 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 are, we are kind of uh, prouding ourselves uh, or we, we are kind of proud to be offering such a session or be offering such an opportunity for young minds uh, so that they can explore what happens after they leave campus. Or if you are out of campus already and you're wondering what to do now, then uh, you, you will have a sense of what really you do once uh, you, you are, uh, join your, or once you join the society. So uh, that's who, who we are. We have a rich history. If uh, you haven't joined uh, or you have, if you just joined us today, Make sure that you don't leave before the session ends. One, that is one thing. And then also make sure that you also connect us, uh, connect with us through our social media platforms. We have uh, WhatsApp groups, we have uh, uh, Facebook pages, we have Instagram pages, we have LinkedIn, almost every other social media page you find us there. And you can also find us, uh, find our videos uh, through YouTube. So make sure that you join and let us know those platforms for more enrichment as we go along. So tonight, uh, I can see we already have Alphonse Juma uh, in the house. And uh, of course, I, have, I had mentioned earlier that Alphonse Juma is CEO of uh, a group of companies. We are talking about 10 companies that are uh, under his leadership. And I, I don't want even to start imagining uh, what is going on, what uh, is happening. Uh, I can I can imagine, of course, this guy uh, starting uh, a company, starting a company immediately after campus or a very short time after campus. I don't want to preempt what he went through or what uh, lessons we can learn, but I'm eager to learn. I'm very eager to learn today. Uh, I've been uh, fiddling with the idea of registering a company for uh, most of the time I've been out of campus. I have not yet done it. I don't know if this session is what will uh, give me that kick to go and register the company, of course. I'm hoping it will. And definitely I'm confident that also you out there will be able to, uh, you will be able to, to, to also have some uh, idea of whether or not to start off 
the company. So as we continue, make sure that you post your question on the chat, make sure that you can also uh, give uh, your comments on the chat, and that way we shall have an interactive session at the end of uh, the presentation of our host tonight, or our guest tonight, we shall also have a Q&A session so that we can have uh, as much response uh, and as much learning uh, as we can from, this, uh, from today's session. So before I start off, I think it is good uh, uh, or uh, I can still, uh, do we have Sunyota in the house? Sunyota. Uh, if you are available, Sunyota, please unmute. I want to give you a second uh, uh, or a moment and then you can introduce our host. So if you are available, just unmute yourself, please. Uh, Sunyota. If you're available, just unmute. Yes, uh, here you are. So uh, I want to and probably give us uh, just a word before we do that. So thank you very much. Welcome, Sunya. Thank you, Charles. Uh, and we get back. My network was not very good. Can you hear me? Yes, from my end, you are clear. Yes, uh, just repeat what you want me to do, please. Uh, so I want you to, I think uh, you're supposed to invite our guest, probably give us an introduction to of our guest, uh, and then we can continue. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, always an honor to join the team, and of course to thank all of you for always uh, enlightening us uh, as the youth. Uh, I think uh, today's <clears throat> uh, topic, we have uh, our guest who is Alphonse, uh, Alphonse Juma. Uh, and Alphonse Juma uh, started with just a year after campus and now 10 years down the line with over 10 companies uh, from the information that uh, uh, Matthew shared uh, with the team. And I think that's why you can see our numbers, we are excited. So he has been able to build the uh, Oracom groups. And uh, many of our dreams, of course, is to start our own companies. And uh, I know the fear is usually, will I be successful? Uh, what re uh, will I make money? Where will I get capital? How do I get even that capital? And I'm excited to know that the CEO and founder of Aracom, that is Alphonse Juma, will be able to take us through. So thank you, thank you so much. Back to you. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I think I got I got wrong somewhere, but uh, thank you the, the, uh, for, for those words. I think uh, uh, if we don't have anything else. I think it is best we invite Alphonse, let him share. Uh, that knowledge. We are all anticipatory of what you are carrying for us tonight, Alphonse. So Alphonse, uh, just confirm that you are uh, ready to go. Uh, good. Can you hear me? Yes, Alphonse, I can hear you clearly. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited to be here uh, for this session. And uh, I hope we are going to enjoy yeah, uh, for this session. My name is Alphonse Juma. Who am I? I'm a father of one and, um, uh, and uh, my wife is Doris, who also came from Mo University. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, how will I start from? I think I can begin with uh, how I started my campus life and how I ended up starting Oracom which I always believe is a journey and many of us, we are able to relate to it. Uh, I started by, from, from Maranda. My schooling was Maranda High School. And then after that to Mo University, the Koilel campus. Yeah, so I got my letter. Initially I was, I wanted to be, you know, the way you want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer. And then I don't know what happened, but I ended up at Chepkoilel campus, Mo University. And my course was Bachelor of Science General. Yeah, so we went there my first time. I think I took, my, yeah, I took myself to campus. And um, day one, we were given the rooms and then I settled in. 
and then I just decided they, we were told like it's so it's not easy to is it transfer yeah to move from one uh, coast to another. So I just decided to uh, apply for transfer, and I made a trans. I applied to transfer to my university main campus, and then I I I was successful, and I got my transfer. So leaving my university. Uh, Chepoelel campus and then going to Mo University main campus and then starting afresh from there. So my new course now was Bachelor of Science, was now Information Sciences. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really know what the course entailed, but all I knew was that I wanted to do computer science, something, anything to do with computer, because my brother used to tell me much about computers. Yeah. So when I joined Mo University, the first thing was um, uh, we I got into that course and we were told it's a number of things, but we were going to specialize in IT in the third year and then we do it in the fourth year and then we graduate. Yeah, so uh, I joined, I continued and then uh life there wasn't very interesting. In fact, I wanted to place, I wanted to show you some things my life, how it was uh, from the time of the university until now, the time that I started uh, doing business, uh, which are these pictures. So I'm going to show you some pictures here. And please, please, please. There are some of them that are all very good. Yeah, these days I show them to people and they are like really, like it's caring. Yeah, yeah, but that is how the life there was, more university, uh first year and then second year and then third year so the idea of coming up with a business started in um let me just draw that humble beginning i always call it the humble beginning so let me try and see if i'm able to screen short share my screen good and then let me see if i'm able to share another one mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, uh -huh. okay, okay. Uh -huh. good. I don't know what you can see on my screen. Yeah, I hope we are able to see my screen, right? So, yeah. hi, we can see my screen, yeah? Yes, we can. Thank you, Charles. So, my yeah. okay, thank you. So, my life in campus was something like this. I'll just show us the videos. The photos, this was in Nairobi after I started. This is when I just started Oracom. And this is Emmanuel, who was also from my university. And then this was me, yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, this picture scares people, like, <laughs> yeah, but that was me. And then when I came to Nairobi first time, I, I yeah, that's how it started. That's how it started. And then I could spend a lot of time, maybe I'll talk about it. I would spend a lot of time on the internet. Yeah, just trying to work. As you can see, that's the kitchen and it's also the sitting room and it's also the bedroom. I think by this time we did not own any mattress. So we were doing all that. And then these are these are guys from campus, for those who know more university. There's somewhere there, I think it's called Falls. Yeah. So these are my friends. This one here is Willis Raburu. We were with him in campus. And Abiyagina is somewhere. It could be this one. We were with all of those people in campus. Yeah. And these were my lovely shoes. I could not leave them. And my white trouser. And then uh, my first company, I think this is this was our graduation, my university. And then um, I think I mentioned it, but I worked in so many companies before I started uh, Oracom. And I'll share more on that as well. That was my first employer. His name was Orion Ajam, yeah, uh, from Netherlands. No, he wasn't my first employer, but amongst my employers, yeah, maybe I'll be able to share that as well. And this is how Oracom started. Yeah, I still hold this, have these pictures. So the logo, I decided to just do it myself. And then I came up with that website, the way you can see it there, but I was still employed, yeah. So when I was in Mo University, what happened, the way I started with just thinking about companies, 
or running something was out of poverty because when I joined the university, my parents, I wasn't coming from a well-off family. In fact, uh, yeah, it's it was bad. Yeah, but uh, I went to the camp, like me, for me, I went to campus myself. No one took me there. And then from the day I entered there, no money, my fees, and then I just hustle around. So when I was in second year, uh, a guy called Nathaniel, he, he, no, we were staying in this common rooms, big common room, I think, in Mo University. So in second year, we were given a room there, and then we, I started thinking about what else I could do to raise money for myself, because I wasn't coming from a background where there was money. Like when I would go to campus, the next thing would be that just closing and going home. So maybe the only thing they would send for me, send me would, would be fair to get back home. So when that life was not very interesting, and I know many of us were students, we also go through that. I decided to, during that time, there was this floppy disk. So I, I used to, I think in second year, we were introduced to the computer lab. So when we went to the computer lab, I went there and then I could, the first thing I saw there, it was like almost my first time to see a computer or just to come close to a computer. So we were allowed into the room, the computers were not enough. And then what I decided to do because the computers were not enough and when I, I interacted with the computer, I didn't know how to use it. So what I decided to do the whole of that afternoon was to take a piece of paper and then I drew the keyboard on it. Yeah, so I just you took my time, this keyboard, I just drew it the way it was. I had a lot of interest, but the facilities were not there. So I just drew the computer, the, the keyboards in the computer. And then I, would, I was asking myself, like, how do I, how come they didn't put A and then B and then C so that if you want to type A, B, C, D, you just find them together. Yeah, it really took me time. Like, for me, it was common sense that they should just put A, B, C, D, and then up to Z, so that if you are looking for A, you just find it. Yeah, but uh, for me, like I could type something and then I look for another one and I type that one, and then I look for another one, even call someone, like this computer doesn't have an R. So I used to have a friend called Robert. Robert Luyali is still my very good friend. So Amy was a bit enlightened about things to do with computers. So he could show me, and then we identify the numbers, and then I I just draw it, and then I use it. That was like my, like what you walk around with campus. So when I could go to my room, I take it after everyone has slept. I have the lights on, and then when I'm up, I used to sleep up, and then I just start typing like one by one. And then over a period of time, I think it took me around a, a week or a month, just trying to type and then I practice. And then immediately I knew how to do that. The next thing was, how do I start to do something extra that would give me money? So what I decided to do was, I went and asked my friend, Nathaniel, and then he gave me a he gave me his computer. There was a computer we could wash up there and then it takes time, like even 30 minutes. When it's just grooming, and then over a period of time, and then it, it comes up, and then you do anything, it again goes off. So I got that computer. He wasn't using it, so I just asked him. So because I was now able to type, and the keyboards I already knew them, it gave me some skill of typing. So what I could do was to type things for people. So people in the people who are in the same class with. When they had assignments, they would ask me to help them type. So it started by typing, me able to just help someone by typing their work. I wasn't charging them for that work. I was just typing and then I give it to them. And then after that, we went into, uh, I went into, I, I started photocopying. Yeah, so I bought a printer, a small print, uh, photocopy this screen one. And then I would photocopy and then I would get some money so that's when I started charging for that work. I was in second year. So by the time I got into third year, I was doing printing as well. 
And my, my house was almost getting popular in campus. And there are people I would admire. There was, uh, who are they? There are some who could even set for you the internet in campus. And those guys, it was like, eh, I was really wondering, like, you could, they could help you set up the internet. They charge you. When you go to play FIFA, they charge you. And then when you go to do something again, they charge you. So I really loved, like, how that guy was doing. So there was a guy who was, like, when campus, like when he's supposed to graduate he doesn't graduate he's already bought the rooms there are some who could uh, maybe get a room at uh, the student center they use it for photocopying so they somehow inspired me so what i did next is to just use my room because that's what was available and i started photocopying doing printing scanning and then doing um uh, and then typing for people yeah, and then I would do that, and then they come, pay me something small, and then I go to class, I pick up now some money. So I can't say that was an easy, easy task. It wasn't. It was very difficult. Of course, if you look at, if you've already, if you're a student and you've already tried and you've already tested some money, sometimes you tend to think not, like not prioritize the education part of it. So what I did next was I went to, I could just do things normally, but people, I was already getting popular for the guy who prints, for people, the guy who types. And then the typing was helping with one thing. Uh, what it was helping me with is that people were get, bringing me their, their, their exams, like their answers. So they say, uh, this is the paper, we are collecting it tomorrow, type it for me. So. What I could do is to pick the papers, and then from there, of course, they were computer. So it's like the whole class, they have brought their assignments. So I didn't have time. By the way, in campus, I didn't have time to do research, go to the library. No, like, it was so rare I go to the library. Because at the end of the day, people would, I could print their, their papers, and there I would get yeah, I could even know, like for some of them, they, it's them who tell me that I have, that there are, there are things that needs to be collected. So that's how it continued. And um, it wasn't very good, very good for me sometimes. There were advantages and there were disadvantages. Uh, the biggest disadvantage I had was I could get so exhausted. Actually, there was a day when I was now in fourth year, there was a day that I went to campus that I went to class and then I was already late when I went to class and when I was there in class the the lecturer he was called Mr. Wanyama <laughs> that lecturer like I was the last person to get to class the class was almost like one like the first session is over and getting in uh very late what I was doing is to print for people and to photocopy for people and to make some money. And then when I got into class, he just allowed me to get into class. And then I sat there and then I was so tired. Like I had worked the whole night for that day. I had like done that work. I think majority was the laptop. The, the printer was, was not very good. So sometimes it could break down and then people were expecting their exams, their printed papers tomorrow. So. I could really spend a lot of time. So this particular day when I went to class, uh, I started, like I just got into class and I said, this is not possible, like I can't continue. So what I did was I took, I just like bowed down and started sleeping. Like in my mind, I knew the teacher would see me. And for me, that was not going to matter because I was very sleepy. So I started sleeping. So I think I slept for around 30 minutes because I had slept like I took time sleeping and then I just had the whole class laughing and then I woke up and I think he asked somebody to wake me up and then what he told me is that you <laughs> how can you be sleeping in class and I'm um, teaching you so I really pity the the girl that will marry you he said like that <laughs> So, you know, the way in campus also, you're like, you really want the girls to look at you and then, you know, he said like, the girl who will marry you will have no future. You'll be like so poor. That's what he told me. So, 
I was like, and all the girls were like, what? Like, Alphonse, how? Like you, people are, people are learning, people are, people are learning and then you're just sleeping. And then the way you say, like, I have no future. And he used the girl, like the girl who will marry you will suffer. Hi. So everyone in class started mocking me and telling me about that girl. So no girl in class wanted now to associate with me because they would suffer. And Mr. Oyama already said it. So I think that was a bit of a turning point for me. So I was like, eh, if the lecturer has said it, and you know, the lecturers and professors, there, you think they are very clever. So I just took it like that. So I didn't want girls around because I knew like eh, they would suffer even it's already known. <laughs> So what I did next is to, to work extra hard now. So what I did next is to start now trainings, like some kind of training. I started training people now on computers. So I would go to, is it Barnia two in Plaza in Eldoret, buy papers for printing certificates. I would train people. I actually started by training people in CU. I was a CU person. And then I trained people and then I print for them the, the the papers they are in their certificates yeah so when i went to when when life continued and then uh now we were graduating and school was ending it was a very sad moment for me and for me i the way you take the the border border for me i took two of them one was coming to carry the things for business because i didn't want to leave them in campus and another one came to carry my suitcase and everything. So as people were leaving campus, I was living with two kinds of luggages. One was full of the laptop, of the compute, the big computers. And then I went home. So when I went home now, by that time I had not come to Nairobi. So I didn't know Nairobi completely. But there was a, there was a time I think we came for, I'd come to Nairobi in, when I was in class three, I was very young. And then now I'd come again a day when we were doing, I think it's those, the days when the old school comes to museum and then they learn something for two days or three days and then we come back. So those are the only two ways that two times I've I'd interacted with Nairobi. So I didn't know anything. So I just went home, carried everything, went with them home. And then one day I said, now with all these things, I can't remain in the village. I have to go to Nairobi. So I went to Nairobi. My first time I went and stayed, I think it was my sister. And then the first thing I did was to buy a little bit upgrade Kidogo. I asked my brother if he could help me to uh, uh, buy maybe a, a desktop that would be a little bit more useful. So uh, I came to Nairobi, I started staying with, I think my brother, yeah, that was in 20, we graduated in 2009. Yeah, uh, was it we graduated in 2010, but I, 2006, I think we finished in 2009 and then we graduated 2010 or 2009. So in 2010, I was in, now in Nairobi. So being in Nairobi, two problems. I have equipment for doing business. I know how to do business, but I don't know where to start from. And the biggest challenge is I don't know how I, like I don't know Nairobi. So what I did is I started, I said now the first thing I'll do is to know Nairobi. So what I did is I could, what I could do was to wake up, walk to town, reach town, take the route from railways and walk along Moy Avenue until I reach uh, Nairobi University. And then back, I could do it like six times. And then I made sure now that one I knew because somebody told me the only, the first part you need to know is, is more universe, is uh, more Avenue. So I knew that one. I think it took me around three days, just walking like that to, uh, to, fro, and then like that. And then I could now try, the next thing was now to try, get lost, come back. Yeah, try, get lost, come back. Yeah. So I continued. I then decided to start a business in Luthuli. Luthuli. So the way it started was I had the equipment already. So 
I just moved in and then I got, as I was walking one day, I just got a, a stall and that was free. So the stall is 15,000, like a space that you only fit yourself. It was 10,000, I think. And I was like, how? If the house we stay in is one bedroom, is one, is a single room and is 7,000, but this small space you want to give me at 10,000, but somebody told me like it's the best deal, just take it. So I took that space and then set up uh, my photocopy and printing. Right there, Luduli Avenue. So the first thing, I've already taken the space, I was told the first thing is city kanjo, get your license fast, even before you do anything. So uh, we went to the space, paid for it, and then started working. Uh, uh, we were looking now for the city council. Then we took the license. As we were coming back, I was with my cousin. We got lost. Like we got lost completely. We could not trace where we booked and where we had paid 10K. We started looking for this place. Of course, it was Luthuli, but now everything was similar. It took us almost half a day just looking for where we had paid the 10,000 for the stall. And then we looked, 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 and we were asking people, are you the one we paid? Is this because the stalls were very similar? So we got that place eventually after looking for it. And then we started, I had my cousin, I just have had him now to start working. But attachment we had not done. I had not done the attachment. So by that time, the lecturer is calling us, I was to go to KWS for my attachment. But the business have set it up. And the business is doing photocopy and printing. And in the business, I think there is where I learned a lot about business, but everyone, Everyone around was Kikuyu. Yeah, everyone was Kikuyu. There was uh, Ali, there was Njuguna. Didn't know the tricks, especially like in town when people come, when somebody's just coming, it's like, and then you go, you call that guy. So us, we didn't know how to do with that. But then they knew like the tricks of how to do business in the streets. So we try it at one point, we try, and then we also get customers a little bit. We get customers, we get customers a little bit. And I think by that time we were produce, we were making, if we could make 200 shillings, that was like highest, 200 shillings in a day was like our best. But the fact that we could hold money, of course, photocopy is too bob, I think it was too bob that time. So just holding the money really felt, we really felt nice about holding, how we could hold the money. So what happened next was uh, I went to now, I was forced, I didn't want to, but the lecturer insisted the course, we have to finish the course by going for attachment. So I went to KWS, I left my relative there and then three months KWS attachment. And then we came back from attachment. So when I was from attachment, a little bit I learned that uh, like, attachment where well, those guys could not allow us even to work with the other employees. Hey, how? Like in turn, they were calling us some funny name. You can't work with an employee. And then there was the vehicle, there was the bus, the KWS buses. Yeah, and the KWS buses, like the an intern is the last person to get into the bus. And the intern is the person who stands until your next, your next, like when you are lighting, even if we, everyone has, has already, is already out, you, the intern, even the driver makes sure you're standing. So I was like, okay, this is how employment is. And this guy called an intern, Kumbe is not the guy who is loved in the company. And the treatment was to the point that the, like, for me, I could go to work and then just sit down. Like literally we sit down. There's no work given to us because I don't know. But from there, I didn't like, I, I don't know, but I didn't like working in government. Gosh, what I went through in KWS, I didn't like. Because first of all, you're treated as a nobody. And then two, there is no work. So you want to do work, but there's no work. 
there's no work for you. You just go and sit down and then you, in the evening you wake up and go home. And then the same, same, nothing because you're working for government and you're also an intern. Yeah, so from there I got, like I didn't like that situation. So I also knew that I really needed experience. While at the same time, I have a business that is making for us around 200 shillings. So what I did after that in 2010 at the beginning, I went to, no, not 2010 at the beginning because it started Doracom in December, but in around March, I went to, now I came back and started doing this business. Then immediately I got a call from Ufunguo. Is it called Ufunguo? Yeah, it's there in town, also government. And I got an attachment. I was told three months. Now this attachment was going to pay how much? 662 and some coins. I was like, Kumbe, this Apache, this guy for in turn, it can be paid. So when I could calculate that in a month, we were not working every day, but in a month I was going home with 8,000, 8,000 8, and 400 and something. I was like, this is it. 8,000, and there we are making business of 200, we have to pay rent 10K, this is it. So I, I got in there, those guys could pay me, they paid me the first month. Second month, I don't know, up to now, I completely don't know up what happened, but <laughs> something happened <laughs> that uh, I could, when I was doing my intern there, I was given every work. The same way I was still an intern, but I was working, like I was given every work, like working, like you can't sit down. You sit down and then your manager, hey, you go fix for somebody, a printer, you go do what? And then I could not even understand those things. So what happened next is I really felt like they were using me because I was overworking and then they pay me 600 shillings. And then at the end of the month, I think it's, it was 8,000 which again, they still, they still, I don't know, taxes or what, and the welfare. I was getting around 6,000 at the end of the month, but I was spending on the road around 4,000, I think. I could end up with around 400 shillings. And I felt really bad because they, like they could reduce the days that I would go to that many, and it was also government. Now something happened. And that thing has really haunted me, but it stopped haunting me in 2011. It, it haunted me from 2010. But that day, I, that day, so that place was close to the photocopy place. And then for those who know uh, the photocopy, there's always a cartridge, there's that cartridge. And then that cartridge, for those who understand, the cartridge, you put it inside yeah, the lab. Yeah, I understand, I understand. <laughs> put it inside the printer. Then there's a time when now it, it prints and then it cuts the, the letters. So what you do is to suck it. So you suck it until it, like the ink starts, and then now you wipe it and take it back. So when I was there at an intern, I could leave. Like I could be called that, Alphonse, printer is not working. Boy, I leave. I just tell them I'm going to the washroom. They look for me. They don't find me. I go there. When I come back, my my domo is my mouth is ink. Like it's like I've drunk the ink. Yeah. Now one day somebody, one of them asks me, like, what's happening? How comes you are not at work? And when you leave, you you do the business, and I find customers for my jar, like so many customers waiting. And then that printer is not working. How? I start, I do it myself, finish it then go back. Then I start looking for how I'm going to approach them. So I start by going to the like, to the toilet and then come back, pretend nothing is happening. So there was a day I was very, like no money, no money completely. So what happened is when I went, we were being, we were paid by the cashier at, and then we were given cash. So when I went, he just counted for me the money and then he gave it to me, like he counted, like he was doing, that was my second month, he counted the money and then he gave it to me. When I went to 
to count this money, you see the way you are paid and then you don't want people to know that you've been paid. So I went to count this money. And then when I counted, he had paid me twice. Like he paid me twice. Oh, me and my problems. I said, my problems are over. I said, I'm not taking back. So the at the, at the same time, I saw an advert. And I think this is a big lesson for us looking for jobs. <laughs> and uh, maybe when you'll, when you'll just start, start doing that. So I saw an advert by AAR. And what they were looking for was business development executives. You hear that title? Business development executives. What? Wow. So I have two problems. One is I've seen a big position, I applied. And then I got, I, I was selected to go for an interview. No, we didn't even go for an interview. The way those things were, I, we were invited to give for a award and then immediately we were told we have been selected. So I told them I'm, I'm still at Ufunguo, but they told me they can, I can, I can drop it if it's an, in touch, an internship. I asked them very well, what is my position? Business development executive. So I was like, you mean Alphonse is going to be an executive somewhere? Hey, I left that company without even telling them, <laughs> like with the money. So that lady called me another day, asked me, uh, we are, there is some money I paid and we don't know the person we paid excess and could it be you? Me, I didn't want to lie. I just told the lady, that the way you gave me the money, I didn't count them. But uh, when I go home, I'll check and see if I have that money and then I'll take it back to you. Then I told myself, for now I have problems. <laughs> My problem is I've, I've, I'm now going to be an executive, but I don't have money to start sustaining me. So I said, this lady, I'll come back after going to be an executive, I'll come back to pay the lady all the money the money she wanted and even double because I was going to be an executive. So that's company number two. I went to AAR. Koi, I did not know that Kumbe, this job called sales, <laughs> the sales job is what they are calling business development executive. So a group of 20 people started straight from campus. We are business development executives and our manager is a business development manager. Oi. Very happy. Orientation. We were taken to, was it called Williamson House? The, the house, the one who upper hill. Hey, hey, hey. Life was the best. We were given food, lunch, we are served. Rice, beans, food. I said, now I'm an executive. Now this is the company I was looking for. And I was just waiting for salary. So when we asked them, but now is how, how is the salary? By that time, they had already told us every good word you'd hear about sales. You know, this, the way they pitch sales. You'd be going to one business, you even get one 50,000. So there's no need of even giving you 20,000 or giving you 30,000 because one client alone, you know, the way they do their hands, one client alone can pay you even 500,000. And then they bring other people, they tell us, this is my nini and this is the client, the ones who have gotten commissions. And this client is 400,000 and this is the check. Oh, we were psyched up to the point that we could be asked, do you want us to pay you salary or you want to do sales? We were like sales, that one. We want to earn those monies because it was like just going. So I have the Ufungu lady, Tashia, I have her money and they were mistreating me. I said, I'll return later, but I want to earn this money. And we already coached to be salespeople. I tell you, we could sell anything. So as you're staying in Kayole there, and uh, life is already very interesting when you go to the office. And then now first thing now is, uh, we are told to now day one of going to the field. We are going to go to the field. Each person is given their section. You go this side, you go this side, you go this side. Me, I was given industrial area. And I was told all 
the vehicles that you see, the big ones, they take all their property, their goods to Nairobi, to industrial area. So what you do, you get one business from a Mwindi and you're rich, like you, your life will change forever. Day one, I started. The first place was Kenpoli. I went to Kenpoli and I told them about AAR. We want to give them health insurance and we want to give them ambulance. And when somebody gets injured, AAR will pay them and we pitch the covers of insurance. Come tomorrow. No, come next week. Come next month. I did that to everyone. Oh, come next month. Come next month. One day I went to a church in town. Like now I could just go for lunch hour service. After praying, I just approached the pastor. And I told the pastor, I want to give the members of your church insurance. <laughs> the pastor was like, insurance for the church? How? We ask you are insured by the blood of Jesus. I was like, really? Now, that pastor promised me that he was going to give us that even if they were going to just insure the, the priest only. And then I started calling the pastor. He's not receiving my calls. But when we were in church, he was really like excited when I was a guest. The day I was the guest. Uh, and I said, now pastors, you can't trust them also. Those who are Indies also, I can't trust them. I, uh, so all this, uh, that was my job number three. Then job number four, now I decided to, after those frustrations, I think it took me two months. Two, two months or one month. I could walk to the Solaria, walk, 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 walk. And then no one, like the amount of money I earned there for that period of time was 200 shillings. There was a day we went to Jamuri, this safari rally. We went to Jamuri and then we were given 200 shillings as fair. That's the only money I earned from AAR. Now I say life is not easy for, an, for the guy and in turn, and now me, they call me a business development executive. I'm working every day. I don't have lunch. I don't have anything, but here I am. So I decided to resign from AAR. And the next thing I came back to the business and then things were still not working. I, I was given a job. A guy could give me a job. <laughs> I, he told me we were going to high rise is where the business was. When I went there, fiber. Hey, fiber. And then I was to be a developer. He had asked his friend to give him a space in a cyber cafe. I started working one week. Asked him, how much am I going to be paid, sir? He told me 3K. 3K per month? Yes. Yeah, I was like, it's fine. I can do it because I wanted to learn. So I took the 3K. In around two weeks, the cyber guy threw him out, threw me out. I was the, the employee. So the 3K also ended. Now I don't have anything. And then after that, I, I worked in too many two companies like that. And then I was just using the money that we, the guys were making the small, small monies for fair. And then in that period, up to December, I'd worked in around seven companies, six companies plus the seventh one would be now the internship at KWS. So at that point now, I did to start to rock home. So the guy who was paying me 3K, he was doing domain and hosting. So my brother was in uh, my brother was in Canada. So my brother told me, he referred me again to that guy and he told me he has paid that guy to register for me a domain, 1,000. So I go there, he'll give me what is called a domain. And then I start from there. I find my bearing. So I went to that guy and he gave me the domain. He registered it. If you look at oracom.co.ke, registered in 2010, December. And there I had a domain. So I built, I, I started, I started, I started doing the, like now I said I want to be self-employed. I didn't know that's the mistake I made. When I just said I want to be self-employed, I started a company. Like I left, I just left everything and started like, now I want to do my own. Up to now, I honestly don't know 
But I always tell people starting your company is not a very good idea. Starting your own. According to me, though, is not a very good idea. It's not a very, very good idea. It's only a good idea if you are ready to number one, sacrifice a lot. And then number two, you're able to forgo. So I started this, and that was the mistake I did. Because I started this, I had a domain, and then the way you buy yourself, oh, I could read in the internet, and then somebody said, me, I resigned. We want to be your employer. Oh, me, I'm going to be self-employed. I'm going to be my employer. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to do what? I followed those things as I could write, read them. And started Oracom, 2011, got in there. First baptism, plans are not paying. I did website for my relatives. They, they, I finished them. Plans are not paying. Why? Like you do work, but plans not paying. That is the problem. Not that you don't have any, but they are not paying because they know also that they are misusing you. You're just starting up. They call for an office. You Can I come to your office? You don't have it. So they know. They know this is a guy to, a cheap guy. So I did around six websites for free, like free, 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 free. I didn't have negotiate. I could not negotiate. And then, and then I, it was, I, I decided it was enough. Like I, that is the time I ate problems in court. I saw a lot as a campus student. And what I did next was to look for unemployment. And I got employed at A Plus Motors. For those who know it, A Plus Motors. We were selling cars now. So at A Plus Motors, um, I was told I'm going to be um, a developer, a web developer. So I went there. My boss was Mr. Mwangi, still my mentor till date. He told me, Alphonse, there is a problem. Now we have a developer. His name is Madenge, and he's. We want you to be now our web developer. But now we are going to pay you fifteen thousand. Like now, that is job now. Not attachment, job that now you stay with, 15,000. No, not 15,000. They were going to pay, him, yes, 15,000. And now he told me that my manager, like the guy who is my manager at that point, he's earning 14,000. But I'm going to be paid 15,000 because I'm from the university. I didn't know that was the start of my problems in that company because that guy, I don't know at one point he realized that I was earning more than him and I was just from campus. I didn't know how to code. He started frustrating me, frustrations, A plus. And it was a godly company. We were praying hey, hey. and then they were serving lunch. So from there I worked a little and then I, I told them, no, I, I applied, applied for jobs. I got one, I applied one at now this company, this one. And then when we went there, they just gave us practicals. I didn't know how to code practically. So the chance went. And then again, they advertised for another position. I applied again. And then I was invited to work there. So I went. Our bosses are in the UK, are in the at Netherlands. And then we're starting now at Henosoft. Now. Problem number two, no, pro not problem, but when you went there, we were told salary is 30,000. 30,000 for, uh, and then now I couldn't understand, but they could deduct it until it comes 21. I didn't understand, like I was going home with 21,000, but I was extremely happy that the amount there is 30,000, even if they're deducting it 10K, but at least um, 30,000. Higher. I continued. Now the Oracom is not working. It's just there the way I started it. So we were calling, it was not called Oracom. It was called now Orango Computers. My father is Orango. So he's the other one now. So I put those people, them, like we were not using the domain. We are just doing photocopying. Well, and then uh, what happened next was elections. 2013 elections is approaching. And then I decided this period here, this, 
no. Around this time. Yeah, around this time. So there is this, there is this, there is this, I think we know Kilemi Mweria. Kilemi Mweria. Kilemi is 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 a uh, Kilemi, just the big politician from Meru. Kilemi. So the wife called me and then no, they just put something and then I decided to apply. He wanted somebody to build a website for a college. And then he told me I, if I can meet him, meet her. Meet her where? Hotel Intercontinental. Whoa. I went there. And then she asked me, I want you to build for me a website. How much? I said 20,000. He told me 20 is too much. I have 15,000. I was like, bring, yes, immediately. So this guy, this, Kilemi, Nini, Sarah Kilemi, she gave me the, the job at 15,000, like a website, a website for a college, a big college, 15,000. I said, yes, I can build. That time we were building with Joomla for those developers. Now, Elections is approaching, and then I started doing something with Joomla, and then I ended up uh, a portal for aspirants. And then one day, a, an MP called me. I don't know who was referred by that Sarah, but by the time Sarah was getting me, he could invite me to Hotel Intercontinental, and then we go to the swimming pool. And then, like I'm just sitting there, Olago Lodge, jumping into the water. Like another one jumping in the MPs. Oish. Yeah. I was like, this is it. This is it. I'll build a website even if even if who comes from the water and tells me he wants a website for 5k. So long as they can always bring me to Intercontinental here. Where hey, the life there was nice. Where you you need a bit, they even ask you, can you go swim a little? You walk a little, you go swim, me in my suit, you know. I'm not going, like, I'm not going to the water, but Sarah was very, like, accommodative. She could help me, even now, to the way they serve the, the juices until they put the, like, it is that pineapple. <laughs> she could help me, like, how do you eat it? Like, if they serve things I don't know, she was, like, she knew very well. Alphonse is the person we are going to, I'm going to help. So, she picks it from her plate, she shows me, and then she starts to eat. I would wait and see how she's eating it. And then I would see tactically. So that's how I started interacting with the, with the, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I keep those who are typing here, you're encouraging me. <laughs> okay, so what happened next was I, I decided to do that. So something happened for my business this thing called search engine optimization. So immediately my websites, all my websites, they decided to rank top. So they started ranking higher than the company I was working for. This is innocent. Somebody could do web design in Kenya. My website is coming on top of the work I was being paid to do. So they started planning for me. And then one day I just sensed, because I could go meet, I, go, I could go to parliament and then come back and say I'm from the bank, and then they just knew hey, this guy is doing something. And even if this company seems to be his, so they I was they planned like they executed how they were going to the one you are dismissed without salary. It was planned. It was planned. I had an insider who is showing me even the emails. Now Alphonse was to be I was to be sacked on a, it was on a Saturday. I was going to be sacked and even they had written until it's already planned how I was going to be invited to an hotel and then I would be sacked there. So what I did next is, that was like the same week, I just timed it out, they were going to sack me because by the way, they could sack me because I could pretend every day I'm going to the bank, but I'm going to meet Sarah. And when I go to parliament, like parliament, how? You don't want to come back, it's a nice, good life there. So Sarah gave me, uh, Sarah gave me the I think paid me seven k or something, and my sucking was coming, and I was told 
I'm going to be sacked. And my insider gave me everything I was going to be sacked and the reasons I, that were going to be tabled. So what I did is uh, on a Wednesday, uh, no, before that they gave me, they told for you to sack someone, you have to write warning letters. So I was just, I, there was somebody who was told to warn me, like in one week I was warned twice. So that was the last one, which goes now with this mission. So what I did is I, I went to do, no, Moy Avenue. And then I, I bought some specs. Like I looked for specs. I was told specs is, lens is 14K, but I decided to buy. I, buy, I bought one specs that was 500 shillings, like the whole thing, frame, everything, 500 bob. And then I came to my employer and told him, I can't see. I have to, I'm resigning today because my eyes have developed problems. I can't see. And I resigned that day. Okay. So. I caught them off guard before the meeting. Meeting was planned from Netherlands, so I resigned. And then when I resigned, so from there now I went to, we looked, we decided to, no, other things maybe I can share another day. What happened immediately after that? Because I see there's no time. But me resigning, everything stops. Actually, everything was like stopped because I didn't want to resign. I did not want, but because of the situation and I was going to be, I was going to be, I was going to be sacked, I resigned. Yeah, and when I resigned, the next thing that happened um, is, I went to the house, the boy I was engineering with, we stopped that business because it wasn't doing well, the computers were already wearing. So when I came, we came to the house and I told them, for me, I've resigned, we want to start doing business. We want to start registering domains. That guy is called John Ciso. You'll see him a lot on the Oracle things. Yeah. What he told me is Alphonse, tutapata wapi unga. Like, where are we going to get Ugali? For him, his main problem was Ugali. Where are we going to get Ugali? And I told him, John, even if I would have not resigned, still we would be stuck. I was going to be stuck. There's nothing I could do. And he told me, Go back and plead with those people because how are we going to survive here? We are going to go back to, to Bondo. That night we cried and cried and cried. And out of that crying, what followed next was, was a journey. I think I speak a lot. So maybe if I have another session, another day, I'll follow. I can tell you what happened from there. That night when we cried and cried with John. And then out of that crying and whatever, we decided to go to Kileleshwa and get a servant quarter house there. Yes, and the rest is a story that I can share another day. I think we don't have time, yeah. But that is how I have been with business, it's been journeys. I think from that time that I resigned, it's been a great journey. It's, we've cried, we've seen a lot, and right now we, I don't know, but it's interesting. We've, we've at Oracom we've built something very interesting. It's very interesting. It's very very interesting. We've what we do no comp like no none of our competitors can do it. Yeah, and I don't know. Yeah, so the other things have been tears and tears, but we've built something very 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 interesting. Thank you so much. The rest another day. Back to you, speaker. <laughs> wow, thank you, Alfon. <laughs> I think it was a, a beautiful sharing, uh, giving us your journey and what you have went through. Uh, uh, you have left us hanging and hungry for more. Uh, you know, really, how did you move from that uh, like uh, it's almost shackles because of what you, you, you actually the, the, the position you have left us is that you have just now been you have just resigned and you don't you don't know what to do next you are crying so I think that is a, a very good story and of course we would like to get more of that uh, probably in another session uh, I'm sure and uh, Probably uh, before before you leave us, or before we go to questions, 
Uh, tell us now where you start today in terms of uh, your company. In terms of, just just a, a very briefly of what you do today, so that we have now uh, the real image of you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you still want me to talk, <laughs> but currently now this is our company, and this is a dream I had in 2010. Is a dream we've just fulfilled it. But what we do, which is very interesting, I think none of the companies in Kenya do this. We with Oracle, each year our dedication was to create a company on its own. So we created Oracle. It was the first one in 2011. We created Oracles. We built them like this. Now we built Pulse City. We built My Bigoda. We built Ora Media. We built Ora DMT. And for all those clans that I mentioned, I don't know how it happens, but these are some of our clans. AAR became our client in 2017. And I went back there and I charged them. I made sure I charged them worth my amount. I put it on the web design course. <laughs> AAR paid us 350,000 for building their website. For me, that website was worth, I think, around 100K. But I put it there because I worked for them. But I didn't know. When we finished the project, I invited the project manager and I told him, I'm the one you're working with. So that was why. But currently, we I think we ran something very interesting. We built 10 companies, 11 companies, the 11. And all of them are very interesting. We've not yet marketed them. We've started marketing them now. And running a company, maybe that's what follows after that. This thing called running a company, I think I've gone through it all with 10 companies. And... Uh, so far, so far. In terms of our company, just to give you a, a rough idea of how our companies are, this this guy, the guy I'm telling you called John, he runs, he, he, I, did, I gave him this to run or a mobile. And currently, this guy, he, the way we suffered, that suffering that we went through, like the way we cried, what I did is I taught him about some basic things about life and what I had gone through in, at AAR. And then he caught them and he believed in the dream. This guy, so right now is one of, there are people who have come to Oracom and go, he may still remain, but this guy here, single-handedly one person at Oracom, he makes money, I cannot say the amount, but he makes more than a million alone. Like one person is one branch that performs like, like you can't imagine, you can't really like imagine. Like it does good, it does good, but he, he also works here alone, one person. The reason for that, he says, Alphos, is based on where we've come from because we learned from the basics. So these days when we have even people, like they can't understand it, what we went through. And I think, I think for those who are in campus and they want to start their businesses, um, there are certain lessons that no one else will teach you. Life will teach you when you are starting. Life will teach you. Life taught this guy who runs this. His name is John. And that guy right now, he single-handedly like alone. And the reason why he does that is just because of the suffering and the way we cried. Yeah. Back to you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alphonse. And uh, of course, there are so many questions. I'm sure there are so many questions and I want to welcome uh, everyone so that uh, we can have like some engagement before we leave off or before we log off. I can see we don't have uh, much time. Uh, so I, I probably can uh, quickly go through some of the, the comments that I see here. I don't know which is the best platform. Let me use, uh, I have two screens. So I'll be reading from a different screen uh, from uh, my camera. So I can see Anne Megwe said, very inspiring journey, Sajuma. It's worth being listened to by nations. And uh, he, he gave a suggestion that uh, you can also have, uh, you can join us in a Saturday session. So I leave that uh, uh, to Coach Matthew for further discussion with you. Then Denzel Gitonga said, this is wonderful. Uh, thank you, Denzel Gitonga. Then we had Eric uh, who said that it, uh, it's good one, Alfie. My truth is true when I was at KNA. I think he was commenting when you talked about KWS and the experience. 
I mean, in turn, uh, of course, I also uh, I can relate to that uh, when it comes to government offices, and especially when you are calling the cult of an intern. Then we have uh, John Gitoga, was talking about uh, Kirami Nwenya. He was just giving you the name of, uh, of that uh, politician. Then we have uh, Mario. He said, this is a very exciting journey. So that is, uh, that is uh, Coach Marty. And I think uh, when you give us, or when you give that story and then someone looks at it and wonders, and how comes now you are where you are? It is a very interesting story and definitely uh, it is a very good journey. Then uh, again, Denzel said, wow, Joe, so inspiring. I think, I think uh, it, it just carried him away. And of course, it was quite inspiring. Then we have, uh, again, uh, okay, Coach Mandy is inviting. If you are a new member here, of course, let me also echo that. If you are a new member, make sure you join the WhatsApp group and you also uh, uh, connect to, to us through various social media platforms. We have uh, uh, great from uh, Denzel. We have uh, John Tonga saying, you've done well, sir. Uh, so inspiring, that is from Denzel. And then Mary says, wow, and it was very long, wow. I think uh, being inspired and of course uh, being carried away by the journey. Then we have John Gitonga. Entrepreneurship is not easy. We have gone hungry, had no rent, not even a coin in the pocket. Seeing how far you've come, uh, or seeing how far you come is not just an inspiration, but a beacon of hope. Godspeed to you and Oracom. That is from John Gitonga. Oh yeah, John. John is also uh, starting out uh, in terms of uh, entrepreneurship. Thank you for uh, very good words. Then you have David Pamba. Uh, he has got three questions. You can note these uh, questions. One, how did you start the companies? Number two, how much did their registration cost? And then he is also asking, how much business does it cost to establish uh, one company? So I think if you can answer the three questions uh, just very briefly. So one, how did you start the companies? Uh, how did you start the companies? Uh, I think I did not start by registering. I think it's one thing that people make a mistake with because the registration cost, which is tied to question number two is, uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, the registration cost for comes with a number of things. So we didn't. The it depends on the business you want to register. Sole proprietorship won't allow you to go very far when it comes to tenders. Uh, so you can start as a sole proprietorship kind of business, and alternatively you can do a company. And when I registered Oracom, I did not start in twenty twenty. When I started Oracom, I started Oracom in 2010, but I registered as a, a sole proprietor in 2012. And then I ended up registering as a company in 2015, a limited company. When I registered as a limited company, I spent 20,000. So the guy did for me the memorandum, the shares. Up to now, I still don't know what even he did. He has to do, do a number of things. She was a lawyer. And now also my client these days. Yeah. And um, how much capital does it cost to establish one company? It's, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy to establish. I think it depends on the kind of company you want. But for me, when I started Oracom, I didn't have capital. This thing called capital, I just hear people talking about it. But I didn't have capital. And uh, I just started Oracom itself with no capital. The only big and expensive capital is your time and your energy. Yeah. And then these days, all the companies I start, I don't know how it is, but for me, I sacrifice, like I sacrifice a lot. And something happened to us, by the way, that when we were trying not to create a company in 2013, Something bad or good happened, but we got an email from KRA. It was not a bad email. By the way, KRA writes you an email, you it's not easy always. But when they wrote us an email, 
they wanted us to serve them. Like they wanted to become our clients and we didn't have anything, like no, no, no nothing, no ETR, but care is like, we just send a quotation and they approved. This is approved, come offer this service, bring the ETR. Why? We don't, we don't have an ETR. So that day, me and this journey, we decided to go to town. We were looking and we got an ETR and KRA became our client in 2013 when we were just starting. So you can always sacrifice, sacrifice and start up something. With digital, you don't even need any money. Maybe that's something I can share another time. But you don't really need a lot. All you need to do is to get little and then you save and save and sacrifice. And then you build it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I think that is uh, of course, I know some some of some people have been tried back because of the thought of registering the com the, the company first before you even start uh, your services or your businesses. I think it is an eye opener. You start first of all with your service. You start serving, and then you can do the registration as you go along. Of course, and I think I I, I have also learned something even if because some of us are fearful that KRA will get to us and we are not doing the filing. Uh, if you got KRA as your customer and you had not registered, I think uh, we, we can also do that. So I, I, I hope, David, you are uh, uh, well answered. Then uh, I can see Sue said, wow, very inspirational. That is uh, from Sunyota. Then again, David also uh, asked, how do you uh, compare the returns on investment for a digital web-based company like yours versus a physical company like dealing in hardware surprise? Uh, uh, I can say web, web leads, like web leads. So long as you know how to do it, especially how to do your marketing, uh, it's always organic. You have to really think about organic. You have to really think about also good service but you cannot compare because for digital or web, there is no investment that you have. Like you're not buying something to give someone else something. So web leads, currently I run a supermarket, but if I compare the performance of the physical supermarket, like a supermarket, uh, it's a small supermarket though, a mini supermarket where people go buy. If I compare that, the performance of that, and even the performance of one of my brands, you cannot compare because for that, you have to get a supplier, you pay them. But for web, if you do for someone some work, you're good to go. That's the whole of it is your money. Okay, all right. Thank you uh, for that. And I hope again it is an hour opener for us. Then I can see Sadan is saying, all in all, God is great. Uh, I think he is being or giving us some testimony. And probably before before uh, we, we we leave, or before I, I I go to the next step, uh, just a very quick uh, question. I know, of course, now you are dealing with the, like, of course, you are approaching business differently from how you approached when you were starting. Uh, I, I I think I can confidently talk about uh, you being funded by venture capitalists. So probably tell us what is your baby company or what is your youngest company and how much is it valued at as, at, as, as of now? <laughs> my youngest, <clears throat> my youngest is each one. Oh, it's difficult to say, but currently we are building something. I think we have a number of developers working on it. But my big order when it when we were at the KC Billers then we it was valued at 40 million. What they did is I don't know how they do the valuation, but I think when you're in the digital space, especially where you work with people, the valuation is not really the money because we presented the money oh. itself. But they told us it's more of the impact and the signups, the people have signed up, there is a way in which that's valued. So in 2019, my big order was valued at that much. But after we learned that, we basically we we like so like there are much there's more than full, it's more fulfilling to have a solution that helps people, that helps people to do something. 
So our youngest baby in the in the you say in the block or what is Pal City, Pal City. And these days that platform makes us so happy because we've given a platform to people. We've given a platform to people. Today I met uh there's a guy called is from the president's office. He came to the office today and he said for him, since he joined Pal City, he found it as home and he was sent to come and say, to come and ask me what is the value of Pal City if somebody is to buy shares. And we sent him back, we said, go back to the sender. We are not, we are not selling any shares. So the main thing is when people look at, especially things you do, for me, I can advise someone. If I'm told between Oracle, the ones that make money as Kemsa, as clients, ETC, and I'm told the ones where we, we literally work without getting money. Like on Pal City, nil. Like even today, end of day, no money. But it's the, pl it's the platform that investors are looking for. They are not, like they say, Uber has worked. Uber has never made money. We see on Jumia, they have never made money as well. But their valuation, if, if somebody is to value them, uh, the reason is they change lives, basically. So we are more encouraged in terms of what we are doing. We are more encouraged by the brands that even don't give us money, though the sacrifice is a lot. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Those are now open. Uh, those, those that are prominent or those that we really know and want that are probably uh, making very huge money, probably just mentioned Pearl City. And I hope everyone here, of course, uh, has joined Pearl City. Uh, and if they haven't, uh, uh, you, can, you can just search for Pearl City or you can click on any of the, of the links from uh, the guys in our groups who can join and have a field day. So uh, I want to invite uh, Coach Matthew, uh, take it off from here, and then probably uh, you will, uh, he can give Alphonse the closing words or closing remarks. So Coach Matthew. Hello, hello everyone, how are you? Can you Very hear fine. me? Ah, awesome, awesome. I, I don't know that I'm, I can be seen. Let me see. They have been behind the camera or, or rather the other side of listening. And thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, Alphonse. I've been following the journey. Well, I know you. You are my friend for many years. This guy, Nirimujua, he's a picture of Kionyesha. I'm a chapa kabisa. I need... <laughs> I knew him those days when he was in campus, actually. I think he found me. He found me in second year or something like that. So um, that day, I don't know. Yeah, I was ahead of him by one or two years. And Sasa and Dio, Naomba Mawaida. He Maisha. He Maisha Sasa. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alphonse. I think that was a powerful kind of a journey. And thank you for taking time to just take us into the, you know, into the muddy part of it, you know. What lacks, and uh, youths will agree with me, is that uh, what we see out there is the shining stars, you know, or, um, I, I mean, but very few people get to tell us the, you know, the, 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 the matope, you know, taking, getting, moving from one company to the other. Did you say seven in a single year? No, that's madness. Yeah. You know, I mean, who does that? But you can see the journey. And anybody who is dreaming uh, to open a company and uh, to open a business and to you know to achieve something, eh, then at least we learn several lessons. One, one, of course, one lesson is that it is doable. But again, the other lesson is that it is a journey. You do not expect that you are going to, you know, to start here. You know, it's like a, you know, one hit and then you are running. It, it rarely happens, apart from uh, maybe sana sana kwa movies. Otherwise. It's, it's, it's a journey. It's a journey. It, there will be ups and downs. Did I hear you say that you resign, you come to your company, then you discover it's not working, you go back. You, you, I, mean, you, you, I mean, those ups and downs. And I want to believe there are some who are here who are feeling discouraged. Possibly I started this hustle, it didn't work. Uh, I've done a second hustle, it didn't work. Then you say that uh, I'm not cut out for business. Do I have someone like that who is feeling like a uh, Business was not my thing. I think from the, your story, Juma, what I'm hearing 
there was enough times to say that you are not cut out for business. That crying you are crying with John there, I mean, you're not crying <laughs> a cry of celebration. It's, it's, it's this, I mean, to be a musho or something like that. But the thing is, look at where we are today. Look at the story. Right now we are talking of you know, 10, uh, a group of 10. And looking back, uh, though you want to be as mean with information as possible in terms of evaluations and everything else, which is fine. But I mean, look at the impact that this is causing. Uh, look at Pulse City, look at Oracle. I mean, you've just given us an example of one, which is making quite a bit of, you know, a lot of money. And it's just, a, a, you know, one of the units. I mean, what a story for the youth, what a lesson. And uh, does it tell you something? Does, does it speak something? I've, I've heard the way you've responded to the question of company, you know, registration of company. Many of us kill ourselves before we even start the journey or we even start living. You know, we, we are already dead. Because for us, we are, we are thinking like, uh, oh, I don't have capital, or oh, I don't know people, I don't have connections, what should I do about KRA, what should I do about, uh, you know, all that stuff. Eh? And therefore, we get discouraged. And I know many, many of us have, uh, you know, that uh, we want to do that. Uh, uh, we have ideas, we want to do companies, we have the, 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 the dreams and what have you, but the fear or the uncertainties of will I, can I be able to do it and, and so on and so forth. But I think you've broken it down well. It's good to hear that you are not a son of a politician. I thought you are, <laughs> you know, I mean that uh, you came here with a silver spoon. On a, you know, when I saw you, your story on the newspaper, I think it was just about two years after you left campus. I'm like, this guy, Sinifamuacha campus. I love you, Sasa Mauna and Diawi for newspaper. That time, I think you are featured. You are in a, a, a very, a very, a very ashanti kind of an office eh? in one of the offices that you are trying to describe. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sure those are stories that you have today. Uh, I'm seeing you are being interviewed by was it BBC the other day? Uh, was it BBC or who? You are showing me something. Voice of America. Oh, Voice of America. I mean, th these are yeah. these are the guys who are looking for this guy now to interview. The other day when Obama was around, 2015, he was some of the one of the few guys who are you know, who are featured, you know, who are allowed to go and um, uh, and feature their pro, you know their, their companies and their products where Obama was in Gigiri. Uh, that, that's I mean in the UN headquarters. Such kind of and it started in that place. So what are, are we speaking here uh, to the youths and to ourselves, uh, myself included? It is doable. How many people are you employing right now, Juma? Directly or indirectly? Around 40. Before COVID, we were 48. Before COVID. You can imagine. Uh, and even after COVID, you've just resized just a little bit. Many, of course, majority of yeah. companies have even halved their staffs and, and, and such kind of things. Can you imagine 48? This guy here, just 10 years down the line, he is, uh, he is duplicating. I mean, he is, I mean, that's awesome a great job Juma and I think even sharing with us is much more powerful than just seeing you there with the, what you are doing but sharing with us I hope from this session we will we have birthed a few other inspirations that there are two people three people five people uh, in the next two or three years who will be saying that uh, I got inspired in that session and this is my company I'm employing two or I've employed myself at least uh, or I'm employing five and who tells you that you can't employ 50 as well and I hope I will be one of those Thank you very much. I don't want to say more. I think it's, it's already been a, 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 a great and long session. Allow me just to make a, an announcement. Of course, I did not introduce myself. I assume people know me. For those ones who are here for the first time, I'm Matthew. Uh, I run uh, this uh, program, Royal Mentorship Program. And uh, of course, together with the team that is helping me, Charles and, uh, and, and Jacqueline, I've done an amazing job. And yes, tonight, Tuesday, we just reintroduced Tuesday. We used to do it earlier. And then it stopped this year. We have just been doing Saturdays only, but uh, we reintroduced uh, Tuesday. So Tuesday is our is our Churchill row. Saturday is our Ch Churchill show. <laughs> yeah. So what, what you, you'll be seeing me taking a back seat more and more in the on the Tuesday because I've, I I also have some guys I've been mentoring and I want them to take the lead and of course drive this and uh, so that's why you're seeing me, uh, not, you know, being at the back and seeing that this can run and I'm, it's not just about here. Is even the back end. They, 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 they are the people who are running, even looking for the speakers and everything else. I just come and uh, maybe advise here or support here uh, and there. 
And by the way, these people, all these guys I work with, they are volunteers. They volunteered, they found me doing this. They just felt like it's the right thing to do. They volunteered. If any other person would want to volunteer, you're welcome. You can always talk to us. We, we have many other things that we can help, you, you can help with. And thank you very much. So let me just make uh, two announcements. Or are they two or three? Uh, one is that uh, uh, as we are moving on, of course, I've mentioned about Tuesday. And Tuesday, we are dedicating it mainly to the students, uh, university students and college students who are here. Of course, the topics are relevant to every other person. But yes, it is special and uh, dedicated to the students. We will bring speakers and topics that are very, very relevant to the students. We do not want you to just feel idle. You are feeling depressed. You lost one year. Now you are not even doing a lot. I know right now you are doing some uh, online, uh, you know, uh, online, uh, uh, you know, learning and so on and so forth. But I know it feels a bit depressing. And we want to show you that there's another side of COVID. There's another side of life. You don't have to keep dying there. Invite your friends. Make sure that you actually we have our subgroup for just uh, the students. F feel free to invite your fellow students. Let them come there. Uh, ask for the link if you need it. And uh, the link we shared is for the general WhatsApp group that you have joined there and you will be able to. So in June 26th, uh, on June 26th, we are having um, uh, we, 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 we are having a powerful conference. The first, let me share this poster. And uh, we were thinking we might have to postpone it because of this uh, lockdown and whatever, but uh, at least we've gotten some kind of uh, encouragement to move on. So yes, June 26th, affirmed, we are having a physical conference, the first one in Nairobi. We will be gathering hundreds of you uh, who is listening here. And why you will come is because of the way we will do it. It's just not the ordin any ordinary way. What we, our, ours is mentorship. And we want you to rub shoulders with the great people that we are having, the Jumas of here and other people, live, live, you know, face to face, ask those questions in over a cup of tea. And some of, uh, some of the speakers will be bringing it. It will be a whole day event. And some of the speakers will be bringing that have uh, confirmed at least the, the keynote speakers we have. Bagika Mwaura is one of them. Um, the Charles Kajama is another one. Um, uh, who else ever? Uh, uh, am I leaving Masimasika is one of the, 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 the people who will be there. We will also be having, uh, uh, we are waiting for confirmation from Dr. Wale Akiemi. And uh, yeah, so th these are the people we are having. And of course, many other speakers that we have had here before, we will be looping them in. Definitely, you want, we want to take the mentorship to another level where it is not just you seeing people, the people you see on TV, uh, and then you, you are like, you know, they made it, I don't know, their journey. We want them to bring them to your level and also to interact with them. And the, we are so clear even with our speaker, they will not come and speak and go. They will speak. I love they, they, they also we have a, a plenary session, question and answer. And also we have an interactive session of our cup of coffee with social distancing as well. But at least we would want you to, uh, if you've always dreamt to meet somebody, a media personality like Wehika, I mean, if you get some, you are two minutes, five minutes or whatever, if you are lucky to get more, uh, just, just it might be transformation. And sometimes it's not even so much of the words that you hear, just that possibility. It shows you that it's possible. It's possible. It's a human like you. So start registering. Uh, Sadan, please share the link there. We are, we are starting this for today. Uh, we will be sharing more details as we move, but we will be sharing the final details with the people who have registered. So that uh, we focus on the people who want, who are interested. I know we have followings of thousands, but uh, of course, I, I I would want to work with the people who are interested in that to share more details. So register over the link that will be shared. I don't know that it's been shared, and um, or we will also be sharing it on the WhatsApp group, and therefore you will be able to follow. And uh, and of course, uh, we have enough time to prepare. Just 20, June 26th is a whole two months from now. Uh, maybe the question on your mind is that will it be charged? Definitely, we will have to, to put some bills. Yes, we will charge. But as we have always done, we, we offer this for free. So we will charge the lowest cost possible because we want, we want you to, to, you know, to learn. Of course, we will offer you some lunch and whatever. We will appreciate the speakers. So the lowest cost possible. We, will, we are not doing it for commercial purposes. We are doing it for mentorship and empowerment purposes. So the, the, the price that we will name, it will be the lowest possible. Thank you, thank you very much. I think that's uh, the main one. The rest is that uh, we have other programs that we run on the side. We have a, a, a premarital counseling that is going on. We have, uh, it has a whole wing that is running. We have some uh, people running with that. We have the university chapter that is running and you can see this part of it. 
and we we will soon be introducing clubs, Royal Mentorship Club in the university. Keep tuned, and the university guys uh, be be be. Uh, if, by the way, you are so interested in in being one of the drivers of that. Hit my inbox. I uh, will uh, be happy to work with you. And uh, then, uh, and by the way, that is a serious announcement. You better grab the opportunity. Then the, 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 the other one that is running on the side, we also have mentors and mentees, individualized mentorship. I have a team of 30 something mentors, and I have a team, you know, so, so many who volunteered to be mentors, and also mentees who have volunteered and asked to be mentored. And one thing that happened is that when we had a, I, I got, I asked some, some uh, for volunteers to volunteer to drive that. And you know the people who volunteered? I should tell you, some of them, I mean, actually the three people who volunteered to drive that side of mentorship, they are directors of companies. Two CEOs who own, <laughs> you know, who own companies and one director of a multinational. They told me, Matthew, we believe in what you are doing. We want to offer ourselves to run this. And we had our first meeting last week and they told me, Matthew, just overhaul everything that you've been doing. We want to run this and uh, we are running it professionally. We are starting by first recruiting mentors in a professional way. We get their CVs, we vet them, we do everything. And right now we have already received quite a number of students. So we are doing this professionally. And uh, definitely we are building one strong, powerful organization that uh, when you come here, if you're a university student, you pass through us, we can easily tell Juma and uh, Pal City here and Oracom that we have a refined employee whom we has passed through our program, just take them. And because he has interacted with our program and he knows, he can easily say, I come away on a product uh, I will hire him, there's no problem. And by the way, as we speak, that is not theoretical. He, Juma has already hired one of our guys who has been volunteering and helping me. Uh, that's a story for another day, if you missed the other testimony that we had the other day. Some other, one of the other speakers who, had, who, who spoke here sometime last year, Juzi called me like uh, three weeks ago and told me, Matthew, I, am, I have a position and get me one person. Of course, you know what I did. I went to the people who were here with me and picked one and told him, uh, please get this one. And uh, I know the rest is history. And of course, more and more, uh, of course, talking to me on the side. I have somebody also who has called me from Japan and has told me, get me an employee from your, from your circles. So uh, definitely for me, I work with the people. The, 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 God is helping me. As I'm working, you know, helping the, the youth, they are those ones who also come and feel like, eh, they really belong here. They want to volunteer in one way or the other. Definitely, they also, if there are doors like those that happen, we connect them. But more importantly, not even just volunteership, I want to get to a place where me, even KCB can approach me one day and, and uh, tell me, those guys who pass through your mentorship program, eh, and they, can you, do you, can you recommend some few names and we give them jobs? That's, that's, that's a vision. Thank you. I think that's so much. Uh, back to you, Charles. You can wind up as you are allowing the... The, 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 the speaker, I know you had given this to me, but allow me to take it back to you. You allow the speaker to make his closing remarks and then you close them. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much also, uh, Coach. And thank you also for this opportunity. I think uh, it is quite uh, beautiful. And uh, of course, thank you in every other way. Uh, so let me welcome you, Alphonse, for your final remarks, and then we can uh, later close the meeting. So Alphonse, what is your final remarks? Uh, thank you, Charles. Uh, thank you, Matthew, for this platform. I think it's big and huge. I just want to encourage every person who is listening here that uh, there are a lot of things that you can achieve in life. You can achieve them either by you getting your own business and running it, or you can achieve them by being employed. It's not bad to be employed, by the way. Yeah. Um, so it all depends on you. But everything that you choose, you must really try to work very hard and sacrifice as much as you can. Yeah. So I really want to encourage those, those who are trying, who already have their businesses and they are trying. I think... This is also for those who are trying to venture into web development or web solutions. It's not a very good period to, to venture into web development or, or design because everyone these days is trying. With COVID, everyone is trying to be a web developer simply because everyone has time. And then the challenge nowadays is clients don't have the paying power. So you really need to do your calculations correctly. And uh, in case you need maybe some help, 
um, always available if you need help with um, anything you're doing. If even you're starting a business and you're stuck, you can always reach out to the mentorship session already that Matthew has already started and we can be able to see how we can help you. Others I wish as well and all the best. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Alphonse. And thank you for the wonderful session that you have uh, brought to us tonight. I think it has been great and you have learned uh, so much uh, from uh, you tonight. Of course, with your closing word, work hard. And of course, uh, you told us that there are some lessons that life itself will teach you. No one else can teach you. Only life can teach you. So of course, if you're uh, out there venturing into company uh, or business, I think uh, I wish you all the best. If you're into em employment, I wish you all the best. Uh, if you, uh, and and uh, of course, all works for the best. So I think that brings us to the cross of, uh, of uh, our meeting today. And uh, of course, I can see various congratulatory mes uh, messages uh, uh, from, from various participants. I thank you all, of course, for the done at, up to this moment. Thank you all for your patience and for being part of this uh, session tonight. So I want to close uh, the meeting with a word of prayer. Uh, so kindly allow me to make a prayer. So let us pray. Lord, our Father, again, we come before thy holy presence this particular evening. You have done us much. You have done us great, O oh God. You have given us a beautiful session. You have given us an eye-opening session. And you have enabled our speaker to share the journey with us and inspire us in great ways. In each and every way, Lord, I thank you for each and every member who was here, each and every person who participated in making this meeting successful. I thank you for this program, and I hope that your grace and, uh, and I trust that your, your power and your grace shall continue overwhelming us as we continue forward. In the mighty name of Jesus, I commit each and every person in this meeting or in the, uh, who was in this session unto your hearts. Let your grace flow unto them. Let your favor flow unto their lives. Let those who are venturing into businesses uh, experience your mighty hand as you bless them, as you overturn uh, their the, the expectations and uh, exceed uh, the expectations with the abundant blessings in each and every way, Lord. Thank, uh, bring uh, bless us in your ways because you are our only source of hope and trust in uh, in our going forward. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless our night and uh, bless uh, each and every one of us that we may always trust in you that we may always walk with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this trusting and believing. Amen. 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 So thank you, thank you everyone and have a good night. Thank you too. Oh, I will see of the goodness of God.